Welcome to Live Live! Woo! Today we're going to talk about Earth, Wind, and Fire. Is that like your, the favorite group of all the teenagers here? Did you guys even know that was a music group? Okay. They, they almost predate me, so that's, that's probably not unexpected. But it has nothing to do with, it has nothing to do with the group. Uh, if you've got your Bibles here today, we're going to hang out mostly in Acts. Um, if you have a smartphone, you can check out our e-bulletin. Um, we've got all the verses we're going to use today there. So what I want to start out was, last year was a bad year for gardening. Okay, I will be more specific. Last year was a bad year for gardening at the Russell household. Um, and I've got lots of excuses, most of which are the following. Um, we have a one-year-old, it was 100 degrees, and we're busy. So... And no rain. So that kind of made for a... Mm, to say we had a bumper crop would be the exact opposite of what actually happened. So we had a lot of weeds. We had a lot of weeds. So, um, you know, winter kind of comes and spring comes around and it's a new beginning, right? That's what you feel. It's kind of it's, it's a new beginning in life. So this year was going to be different. So we went out earlier this year and, and basically what we had left in the garden was dead weeds, right? We actually had a winter this year, so it killed off the weeds. Everything was dry. So, you know, we've had plenty and plenty of rain. So here's my thought. Before I plow that garden up, I'm going to burn it off. I'm going to burn it off. And here, I'll give you a little little uh, visual cue here. This is kind of, you know, looking, looking at kind of what the garden looks like today. If you can imagine a bunch of dried weeds there. And what I did is, is uh, stood down there by that fence. There was a little bit of a wind uh, coming from the fence, going, going towards the rest of the garden. And my bright idea was, well, I'll just light it down here. And uh, I went around with a hose, and I wet down all the perimeter really, really well. And I went down there, and I, I lit that off. And my thought was, I'll just let that burn off. But let me tell you what happened. This is, i got a movie here that shows you just about how fast the fire went. It does this. I lit it. I go... This is going to be a problem because that fire is moving really fast. And if you see the tree in this picture, you can see how big the fire got. And it was just that fast, okay? Just that fast. I underestimated how fast the fire would move. But let me tell you, where I wet that down around the grass, fine. It didn't get out. All that damage to that tree is simply heat. That, that, those weeds that weren't very tall, I mean, it was just undergrowth. Those weeds burned off so fast and so hot. I'm not sure the tree's ever going to come out of it. That picture was taken yesterday, okay? So, I will segue into a little verse here from the Bible. This is from Acts 2, 1 through 4. On the day of Pentecost, the believers were meeting together in one place. Suddenly there was a sound from heaven like the roaring of a mighty windstorm, And it filled the house where they were sitting. Then what looked like flames or tongues of fire appeared and set on each of them. And everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking in other languages. And the Holy Spirit gave them this ability. See, when the Holy Spirit is described in the Bible, mostly it's used two terms, wind and fire. Wind and fire. And why is that? And why is that? Let's move on. Actually, let's not. Yeah, let's do this. Peter replied, Each of you must repent of your sins and turn to God and be baptized in in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. Then you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, the promises to you and to your children, even to the Gentiles, which is us, all who have been called by the Lord our God. Then Peter continued preaching for a long time, strongly urging his listeners, save yourselves from this crooked generation. Okay? So, mind you, tongues of fire appeared, Peter starts preaching. He says it preached for a long time. We're not told how long. Fire and wind. Think fire and wind. Those who believe what Peter said were baptized and added to the church that day, about 3,000. About 3,000. I'm not super good at judging crowds, but there's not 3,000 people here today. A little bit less. A little bit less. See the analogy a little bit? Holy Spirit is defined as wind and fire. And when wind 
and fire are together and nothing is there to stop it. It spreads very, very quickly. The Holy Spirit caused the story of Jesus to spread quickly. Some might say as quick as wildfire. Okay? And you say, well, this is all, this is all in the Bible. Big deal. Well, let's read on because this isn't the only time it happened. In fact, it continued to spread. While Peter and John were speaking to the people, they were confronted by priests, the captain of the temple guard, and some of the Sadducees. The leaders were very disturbed that Peter and John were teaching the people that, that through Jesus Christ there's resurrection of the dead. They arrested them, and since they were already, it was already evening, they put them in jail until morning. But many of the people who heard their message believed it. So the number of believers now totaled about 5,000 men, not counting women or children. Okay? So that fire was spreading. And what did they get? They got to the fringes and they found some wet grass, right? The Sadducees are like, you've got to stop. And they're like, ah, there's enough dry weeds here that we're going to add some more. We're going to add some more to the followers of Jesus Christ. One of my favorite songs is a song called Third Day, and I like it because it's got rock guitar in it. But um, It's called Consuming Fire. And it, it basically says, our God is a consuming fire. And they, they get that from Hebrews. And Hebrews 12, 28, 29 says, Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, let us be thankful and so worship God acceptably with reverence and awe, for God is a consuming fire. The word consuming means it, everything is gone. Some translations call it destructive. I don't really believe that's what they mean. I don't mean, believe that God is a destructive fire. I do believe that God will consume us if given the chance. So let's think back a minute to burning off the garden. Let's think back a minute to burning off the garden. What were the factors there? Had a little bit of a breeze. I had fire. Had dry weeds. And all of those combined together to make something that spread very quickly. Very completely. What was left in the garden was just ashes. It was all gone. So if we think of the, the kingdom of God and, and our life here on earth and... and Start drawing that analogy together that maybe we are just a garden. What part do we play? And I want you guys to ask yourself that individually. What part do we play in this scene? Are we dry weeds? Are we ready to be consumed and spread the fire? Or are we green grass? Do we refuse the burn? Do we not let the fire spread? Think about that for just a second. Really look into your heart and ask yourself, am I a dry weed? Am I actively spreading the gospel, the word of Jesus Christ? Or am I wet grass and am I, am I actually hindering am I actually hindering the purpose? Jesus said in the Bible once, if you're not against us, you're for us. Right? Kind of kind of drew the line in the sand there. So that's my question to you this morning. Are you are you against Jesus or for him? Of course we immediately say we're dry weeds, right? Absolutely, that's the that's the right answer. We're dry weeds. That's what we do. My question is what does our actions say? We can sit there and say, I'm dry weeds. I absolutely I, I'm on fire for Christ. Are you? Am I? On Wednesday night, the youth learn that our actions are a testimony, right? We learn that people are watching us and people are looking at the things we do. And we can say everything we want, but it's our actions that are our true testimony. Based on our action, does our testimony lead people to Jesus? Based on what you guys do and what I do, is it leading people to Jesus? Or in fact, is it leading people away from Jesus? 
What were the last words that Jesus spoke while he was on earth? Right before his ascension. I'll, I'll show them to you here. They're in Acts. They were talking about when's all these end times going to happen. Kind of the thing Jack was talking about last week. When's all this going to happen? And they said, and he said, the Father alone has the authority to set those dates and times and they are not for you to know. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you will be my witnesses telling about people about me everywhere in Jerusalem, throughout Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. He restated the Great Commission. He had given him the Great Commission earlier and he came back and said, remember what I said about take the gospel to the ends of the earth, baptize in my name? I meant it. I meant it. So, if we all agree that dry weeds are what we want, if we agree that that's the quote-unquote right answer, that we don't want to be the grass that holds things back. We want to be the dry weeds that spreads the word of Jesus Christ. And how do we become dry weeds? We need to get rid of the water other than Christ. When Jesus was at the, at the well with the woman, he said, I can give you a drink that will cause you to never thirst again. Of course, she didn't understand what he was talking about. What he means is, when we rely on Jesus Christ, we don't need anything else. We don't need anything else. And so my question for you is, if you are green grass that hampers the spread of the Word of Jesus Christ, where are you getting that water from? Is it from your job? Are you, are you being fed from your job? Are you being fed from your school? Are you being fed from your friends or your video games or your music? If Jesus Christ was taken away from you, would you wither and die or would you survive? That's the question. I heard a, heard a quote over the weekend that said, you know, we're supposed to die to ourselves so we can have Christ. And, and someone said, we're already dead. We've just got to accept it. This life without Jesus Christ ends in death. This life with Jesus Christ begins in death. Right? And then we have eternal life. So we need to get rid of the water other than Jesus Christ. We need to look at the things that are watering us, that are feeding us, that we're, we're spending our time on. I always say, if I can look at your calendar and your checkbook, I'll tell you who you worship. Ouch, right? Ouch. We've got to get the fertilizer out of our life. And you know what I mean. Cut the crap. Cut the crap. There's so much stuff in our life that has nothing to do with eternity. There's not so much stuff in our life that does not have what I like to call kingdom consequences. That if we do it or we don't do it, it makes no difference to what happens in the kingdom. It makes no difference to whether someone reaches Jesus Christ or not. And I will freely admit that sometimes it's hard to tell. Sometimes it's hard to tell how something's going to lead to something else that's going to lead to something else. But the fact is, if we're getting our water from Jesus Christ, if we are feeding on Him, if we are feeding on His food and His fertilizer and His water, then we will know what His purposes are. And the last thing we need to do is we have to be on fire if we want to pass the fire. If we think back to those weeds in the garden, the only way they passed fire to the weed next to them is they were consumed by the fire themselves. Okay? If you are a lukewarm Christian, if you are someone who is just kind of there, not really into it, you're just going through the motions, you can't pass it along let me tell you why because people will see right through it the word hypocrite is thrown around by non-christians about us all the time and the sad thing is they're mostly right we like to talk about how good we are and how wonderful things are and how great life is and I told one of the kids the other night, we are here because we are all screwed up. Okay, let's just admit it. We're all screwed up 
you're screwed up, I'm screwed up, and if it wasn't for Jesus Christ, we'd go to hell. Okay? Let's just get it out in the open, not pretend that we're, since we're in church on Sunday morning, that we're great. We're not. We're nothing without Jesus Christ. We are dry weeds. And we have got to realize that and got to get on fire for Jesus Christ because, like I've said time and time again, if a, if a semi was barreling down someone in the middle of Highway 63 and you were standing out there, I'm guessing 9 out of 10 of you would try to do something about it. And the fact of the matter is, as Jack talked about last week, the end could be tomorrow. That eastern sky could split and Jesus could come back and the people we haven't reached are done. If you're sitting here today and haven't made commitment to Jesus Christ, start thinking real, real hard about it. Start thinking real, real hard about it. And this is not a fire and brimstone, I'm trying to scare you to death sermon. It's the truth. I believe it. I believe it. Here's the last thought I want to leave you with. Jesus did not say, take up your couch and follow me. He said what? Take up your cross and follow me. Does that imply that everything's going to be easy? Does that imply that it's going to be a cakewalk? Does that imply that when we become a Christian, everything's going to fall into place? No, it doesn't. And so many times we sit there and, and we say, and I've heard TV preachers say too, once you accept Jesus Christ, everything gets easy. That's not the case. The difference is once you accept Jesus Christ, everything that you do now matters. Because before you were heading off a cliff and you didn't even know it. Things aren't going to get easy. Things are going to get worth it. We can't stay on our couch and expect to make a difference for Jesus Christ. And I'm going to tell you this right now. Reaching people for Jesus Christ is not my job alone. You all have a ministry. You all have your missionary fields. You all are strategically placed to reach people for Jesus Christ. Your circle of friends, where you go to school, where you work, the friends that, that you used to know, the family that you, you talk with on a daily basis, the family you don't talk with on a daily basis. You have more influence over them than I would ever have, even if you brought them here. So what I want to leave you with today is get off your couch. Look at your life and get rid of the stuff that's standing in your way from you being on fire. You don't want to be that grass on the edge that's keeping the Holy Spirit from, from spreading. You don't want to let your actions... And your attitude, stop the spread of Jesus Christ. Because it will happen. I've seen it. We were talking in, in youth one night and they said the divorce rate among Christians is absolutely the same as the divorce rate of people who aren't Christians. And if you look at that on the outside and you say, so what's the difference? You know, And a lot of that's because we refuse to get on fire. We refuse to change our life. We refuse to turn into dry weeds. We refuse to die to Christ. So that's my challenge to you this week. Is understand that everything that you do matters. Every choice that you make matters. It's all part of God's great plan. And you guys can make a difference in the kingdom. You can reach people. You can bring people to Jesus Christ. You can use your life as a testimony to save someone's life. If you would, bow your heads. I don't know whether you're a Christian or not, but I want to give you an opportunity to become one if you're not. If you're sitting there today and and some of the things I said to you maybe were, were getting to you a little bit. You want to make a decision to follow Jesus Christ. I want to give you that opportunity today. And with all heads bowed, everyone looking down, room's dark. If you would like to make that commitment to follow Jesus Christ today, please just slip your hand up, catch my eye. I want to pray for you this week. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you. If you would like to recommit, maybe you've made that commitment as a child or, or several years ago or maybe just last week and, and you kind of feel like you've slid in a little bit and you want to just recommit to Jesus Christ this morning, just raise your hand, catch my eye. I want to pray for you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning and we ask that you help us embrace the fact that we are dry weeds. Help us embrace the fact that we are nothing without you. And as we continue to live our life feeding off of what the world has to offer, Help us to realize that that's just going to end in death. That as fun as it is and as much joy as we get out of it this time and as good as it feels, it's not right. And we need to turn and we need to head towards you. We need to stop what we're doing right now, turn 180 degrees and run to your arms today. Our testimony is our action. We can say whatever we want. We can preach. We can carry our Bible. We can come to church on Sunday morning and Wednesday nights and go to lots and lots of Bible studies. And if we don't change our life, no one's going to believe it. Help us to be dry weeds. Help us to turn our lives over to You. Help us to get rid of all the fertilizer that keeps us green, And keeps us from spreading your word. We ask all this in Jesus' precious name. Amen.